something like uh, big data and artificial intelligence architect, and I'm researcher, teacher in different universities. But right now, I only two in Team Spain, and I also Deathbed organizer and DDB Cloud Mastery organizer. And finally, I'm DDB Machine Learning, really for that reason I'm here about Machine Learning. And this is my social network, so if one wants to follow me or have any questions after this presentation or want to know more about Google Cloud or Machine Learning, that is the way to do it. Okay, what is the thing that we are going to do in this talk today? We are going to talk about Machine Learning operations. But this is a new concept that is starting to appear in industry and in the research in the last year, in the last two years. And the objective of this talk is to try to understand why this machine learning operation are useful, why we should do it, what is a machine learning operation process, and what exactly is the main of this operation, how it works, and how we can create this kind of machine learning operation in Google Cloud Platform. But first, we have to do a really, really great introduction about machine learning. What is machine learning? Okay. If we try to analyze how it works in the the, the programming system that we use, we have the traditional algorithm, which are basic three of the algorithm, okay, and the input and the output. The input usually are the rules, that is the code we introduce in the algorithm, we how to qualify the algorithm, and the data, that is the information, that is the parameters of the function or the parameters of the program. And finally, when we execute this traditional algorithm using this input, we get an answer, which is the thing that we expect. But when we are working with machine learning algorithms, it's a bit more different. In this case, the machine learning algorithm has to generate an answer, but it's not specific answer. Has to generate the rule, because the objective of a machine learning algorithm is to create the algorithm. It's the, the, the element that allows us to reason here or no, which is the answer for a specific group of data. For this reason, when we are working with machine learning, we have to change the answer, which is an output in the traditional algorithm, with an input. And we have to change the rules, which is usually the code that we generate to create the algorithm to the output. Because this algorithm, this algorithm is going to create this group of rules to create that thing that we call model, which is the maximum objective of a machine learning problem, to create a reasoning model that allows us to predict anything. Okay, imagine that we want to create a system that is fire or storage, this is not fine. I apologize for this, I didn't say. Okay, we have to create a system that has to identify okay. Usually, if we are working with machine learning, Two kinds of algorithms. The training algorithm, that is the one that is generating that training model, and the sampling algorithm. The first one is usually the, the heavy one. The, 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 the algorithm that is for computation, computational resources. And the second one is the way to use that those rules that we identify in or we define in the training process to use in the model and identify if this object is a subcase or is a network. But who is working this big box? This box. Okay, the first one, the training one, is composed for different states. The first one is the way right, okay. When we are working with machine learning, we are going to use different kinds of information. Usually, this information is divided in different sets, in which each element is an instance. It's like an example. This is the basic data structure that we use to describe the information. And usually it's composed of attributes, this time and of this, that are the different features that we have. We can identify about the different examples or each. This attribute is the atomic representation of the information. There is nothing smaller than an attribute, and it's the basic information. And these attributes can be defined in two different ways. One is continuous attributes, which are numeric values, okay, and discrete attributes, which are not numeric values. For example, the string, JSON, JSON, 
anything that is not unnatural. And we have an special attribute that is the opposite, is the element that we know, is the thing that we call it before answer. And depending on the algorithm or the information that you you watch in the internet or in the book, you can find different kind of names. We have the name of class, we have the name of Gado, and we have the name of predict when you want to predict an average. But during this talk, we are going to refer this to lab. Okay, we have the basic information that is on the road. When we have this, we usually have to do a feature selection because most of the time we have a lot of information which is not useful for the machine that we wrote. And with this information, we are going to generate a group of steps that are going to be used during the training process. The first one is the training step. It's the most important one. It's used to generate the model during the training process by means of the machine learning algorithm. And usually, it's the biggest step. It's around the 80% or 90% of the input. The second one is the validation step. This is a small set that is generated usually from the training set and it uses you in the training process to validate the model. It's to try to, 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 it's to, try to measure the quality of the process during the training. And finally, we have the test set. It is an independent system set that is used to validate the model after the training process. This is the set that we use it to know if the model that we created, if that group of rules are valid or not. And then we have to choose for machine learning algorithm, which is the thing that we are going to use to training by using the training set. But we need more things. Usually when we are working in machine learning, we have to use two really, really important elements, the loss function and the optimization algorithm. The loss function is a function that we use to compute the error of the prediction that the model that we are generating in each during the training during the training process is working well or not. And this and the output of this function is needed to improve the model that we are generating by using the optimization algorithm. All of this is part of the process and has to be defined when we choose the machine learning algorithm. And I'm going to try to explain more about this, but there is many, many information about how to use this and what kind of optimization algorithm you can use. And finally, we have the hyperparameters. The hyperparameters are something specific for each algorithm. Each algorithm has a group of parameters which allow us to change the behavior of the algorithm during the training. For example, to speed up the training process, to create a model really quick, to use less information, or to define how the algorithm is trained. Okay, and this algorithm, okay, the machine learning one, is going to execute it during a group of n. Depending on the number of these, the execution process will be longer or not. And finally, if we execute all of these, we can create a model. This model is the thing that we are expecting, and it's the element that we are going to use to serve, okay, because after training, we have to execute that serving or deployment algorithm, which allow us to use that model to identify the outcome. And we have to use new data. <clears throat> we have the same representation of the raw data. We have to use the same feature selection. Each process has to be the same. And we have to execute that process that is called inference. That is the way to execute the model and get an is a label, and in this case, the system has to say if the input is an equal or it's a captive. Okay, this is the basic thing, how it works in a machine learning process. Now we are going to understand the other things that we need. But the important question is why do we need machine learning operations? Because maybe this is something new that is really fashion, it's really nice, but it's not useful for us. If you remember, we have this super big box, okay, which we have a machine learning algorithm. Okay, we are going to include here the training and the serving algorithm, both of them. And we have to input the answer, the data, and the output. 
commonly people think that, okay, this is a way to create a code in which the algorithm trains and generates a model and services. it. But this is not real. Okay, one important thing we have to know about machine learning process or machine learning cycle, okay, because it's a cycle of training and serving, is there are many, many processes inside of that. We have to define configuration, we have to take it into account how the data is collected, how the feature extraction are done, how we use different analytic tools to verify data, to verify the model, and commonly, the most important thing that we will think to keep is the machine learning algorithm. It is a the small part of this. Then, when we want to create a real machine learning process, we have to think about all these things that have to be around this small piece of code that generates the rules or the model. If you are really, really interested about this, you can read this paper for Google in which they explain why to create this, we need to use all of this. But, okay, we are going to try to make an ordination or order all of these processes. If we want to create like a type of system or process with all of this is working, like it's cycled, we have to put some selection. We have all the information related with data here, okay, that suggestion, data collection, feature extraction, data validation. We have all the process of training, which is here, the training process, the packing, the process management tools, because we have to manage all the things related with training, the execution of the training process, the packing of the training process, all of these. Finally, we have to registrate the model, because we have to keep our models, the models that are generating the rules in any place, and we have to validate the data of this model. We have to verify this model, use different tools, uh, analyzing tools, to know if the model is good or not. And finally, we have to serve this model. And of course, we have to monitor all the process, and we have to configure different elements of the different process. Now, if we see in this perspective, we can see that the process is a bit more complicated than only creating a machine learning training process. This is one of the big problems that we have currently with machine learning systems. Because if we want to create something like, like a software life cycle in the machine learning process, we have to include all of these factors. And we have to make it more complicated. Because we have to identify all of these processes like different operations. The first one is the data preparation, which we prepare all the information. We have finally a training process that generates the rules. Now the rules are here, are not the output of the system, are just a step between training and model package. In which we register the model in which we are placed, we store the model to use it in the future. And we validate the, the model. We have to be sure if that model is okay, and it's better than the previous model. We are generating different models for a similar task. And finally, we have to deploy the model. We have to serve to allow us to the user to use it. And now is when we have to get data from the user and give an answer or a prediction. And of course, we have to monitor everything that is happening here to try to identify errors, problems, or your own system or model work well. And this is why we can explain why we need machine learning operations. Because during the process of generating a machine learning model, we need to execute and define many, many processes, which have to be orchestrated in a correct way. And these six are the new operations that machine learning process include and have to be orchestrated managed and used to generate good models. And why? Because the main objective of machine learning processes is to create a continuous training system based on machine learning, of course. But we saw machine learning code or training process is the smallest part of the system. And, okay, 
if you even see the real of how to use for can be this, it's because now machine learning is something that we usually use in a computer to create a model and put it in a server to make it predictions. But the objective of all of this is to have now and in the future an industry say process to generate models. We we have to define which is the idea we have to convert in a model based on machine learning or in artificial intelligence. And we have to train and deploy these models by means of use, not with drugs. And finally, we have to industrialize this process to repeat all these process. Really, really difficult way. And why? Because usually, the thing that we do is creating a first viable experiment and generating a model. And we put the model in the server, and we don't do anything else. If we want to create a new model, we have to repeat this part. And the objective we follow with the machine learning operations is to create this process to have an idea and create a product that can be evolved during the time and during the use. Okay, now we know why we need machine learning operations. But what exactly is machine learning operations? It's a new kind of operation. It's something that we have to execute in a computer. Okay, I suppose that everybody or mostly people know this diagram. It's a typical develop operation diagram in which we have to define how to how to handle the software development process. It would, we have to define a set of good practice that allow us to create software that can be deployed can be using in an industrialized way. But the point is that this kind of system, the develop system, allow us to do two important things. The first one is the continuous integration. It's a good practice in software development where we have to we, we, we define a set of rules for a way to integrate code into, for example, our repository or some place to try to include the new change and automatize the process of building the code and testing the code to let it ready to deploy in the production environment. And even better, we introduce, we use in these DevOps rules or DevOps systems, the continuous delivery, which allow us to deploy, deploy this software and make it ready to be released by any time. This is something that industrializes the process of developing any software application. And this is something that is not happening in machine learning because, because of, of the, the new things, things that happen. Right. Because usually machine learning systems differ from other software systems in many things which are related with the data and with the model usage. Because in the case of a machine learning process, we have some things that are not covered for the typical DevOps process. For example, we don't have data validation. In this process, we are not validating the data, we are only validating the code. The code. We are not model validation. In machine learning, one of the outputs, one of the products we are going to generate is a model. And we are not validating this model. We are not measuring the quality of the model, which is super important thing in machine learning. And in this case, we are not making an automatic deployment of the model. And of course, we are not monitoring the data that we are using and the performance of the model that we are deployed. Then for this reason, we created a new way to do this. And we are here the machine learning that is a new group of to industrialize the market bearing generation joined with the instrument. And now we introduce all the things related with the model, all the things related with the data, to try to industrialize the process of generating a machine learning model. And now we have the two properties that we saw in, in, in the in the demo. Of operation, but we introduce a new one, 
the things that we call continuous training, the goals that we are finding with machine learning operations, which we are going to allow the system to automatically retrain and serve this model. And this special property is only for machine learning systems. But not only this, because we have some change in the continuous integration and the continuous delivery property. Because in the case of the continuous integration, now we have to test the data and the model, not only the source, and the continuous delivery, we have to deliver the machine learning pattern to the process that we use to generate this continuous training set. And now we are going to see how we can create all of this, because it's the funny thing or the important thing. Okay. When we are going to deploy a machine learning operating system, we have to identify which is the automation level that we want to deploy. Currently, mostly of the scientists and machine learning teams are here, in the level minus one or in the level zero. The level minus one is to do everything in a personal computer and find a way to do that, and find a way to deploy that in a server in a super manual way, without following any good practice. But today, we are going to talk about level, level zero, level one, and level two. Because this is the important thing. Of the objective of machine learning operation is to reach the level two, because it's the fully automated level. The first one, automation level zero, it's the manual deployment. OK, we can create a process that generates a model. We can see here, which we have data extraction, data preparation, model training, and evaluation. And we register the model in something that we call model registry. This is something that we are going to find different tools and in all cloud platforms to store our model. And finally, we are going to serve in the model. And this part, the operational part, that is usually done in the DevOps, okay, is manual. Okay, this is the most common thing that we can see in the industry and in research. Mostly of the companies are in this, this level, okay, because they have this and they can automatize this part, machine learning part, in a traditional way, but they are not doing the deployment in an automatic way. The problem of this manual train and service process is that there is no continuous integration, because usually people work over notebooks, which are executed manually to generate this model. There is no continuous deployment, because there is no model update or code updating. This is updating in a computer, and the model is generated there. And there is no continuous training, because there is not our own training process to create a new model in an automated way. Maybe the best the person or the people or the team that is developing this is doing is creating new models, but they are creating in a manual way, which are not something that reach the property of continuous training. Okay, if we want to improve that, we can go to this. A bit more complex process with more outputs. In which we introduce the concept of file lines. The file lines is a process in which we execute a group of actions that allow us to generate in this case, a model. And this is the pipeline that we have. The experiment is like a pipeline process, okay, in which we introduce the data extraction, data validation, data preparation, model training, model evaluation, and model validation. This means that we generate the code for all of these cases, and we have a system that sets all of this in a pipeline deploy the pipeline in an environment, say the cloud, the Google Cloud environment, and you raise a model, which is automatically deployed by that service process. And we want to use that prediction service in an automatic way. This is the first level of automation, in which we introduce some continuous integration and some continuous training. In this case, we have we don't have no continuous integration, okay, because pipelines are executed 
automatically, okay, that's true. Here, we can automatize the process of executing the pipeline, but there is not so much effect. All of this part is driven manually for the machine learning team. We have partial continuous deployment. Because the pipeline is deployed here in an automatic way. At least, we have fully continuous training, which is a special property of the machine learning system. This means that there is continuous training process to use the pipeline to generate a model and deployment of the model in application. This is a good thing. We have covered the most important process, the most important part of the machine learning process, because we are generating different models which are the evolution of the previous one. This is really, really important. But this is not enough. We can go a bit more. We can go to the level two, in which we have the full automation process. With continuous integration, continuous deployment, and continuous training. This is the thing that we expect to have in some years, and this is the thing that we want to create. And it is possible. Now. We keep all the automation process that we have for the pipeline, but we change the process of generating pipelines. Now, we have something that we call an experiment. That is something that we are going to execute in the pipeline. And the process, the system, machine learning operating system, can create the experiment to simplify the work of the data scientists and to help them to create new ones. They can change some elements of data or of the configuration of the pipeline and execute them in a continuous cycle to generate new models to serve. And in this case, we have reached all the elements. We have continuous integration because we are putting the code in the repositories and automatically it's testing and it's starting the deployment process. We have continuous delivery because these pipelines are packaging, okay, and this process is executed and generate a continuous training process to define, to build these models that are part of the production system. Good. This is the thing that we are looking for. But now it's a difficult question. How deploy machine learning operation in the cloud platform? Which are the things that we have to do to do all of these, and which are the elements that we need to use? Okay. Remember this. This is the machine learning cycle, I thought. And this is the thing that we are going to convert in a file. Because this is all the process. This is all the code that we need. We have to define a pipeline that has all of these process to define all of this. We have the data preparation, the training, the model packaging, the model validation, and the model development. And of course, the monitoring. And I, our system has to retrain the model to generate new rules and they all of these in an automatic way. Okay. To do this, we are going to do something like this. This is the typical diagram that Google recommends to deploy a machine learning program. And this is the and these are the technologies that Google recommends to use. The first one is Kubernetes for pilot execution. Not only for pilot. Kubernetes is going to execute the training process, which is in the pilot, and the serving process that is in the pilot too. Then it's gonna execute everything. The second one Maybe the most important one is huge flow. Huge flow is something that we are going to see in detail in some minutes, but it's the most important feature because it's the system that orchestrates, orchestrates the pipeline. And this is the most important thing for the machine that code. How to create and execute the pipeline. The Google AI app, we are going to use for model registry or even if we want for trade. We have Google Cloud Storage to store data and models, usually the data, data and the models that we are generating. If we don't want to use the system that allows Google AI, we are going to use data, data flow for data processing and transformation. Okay, all of this is going to 
work in the part of data processing, okay? And even if we want, we can use data flow to model validation. There are other different ways to do it, but this is something that we will support. And finally, something that we saw before, is the container registry, in which we are going to store the components of the file anchor. In some minutes, you are going to understand why this element, the container registry, and the file anchor is super important. But you can see in the diagram, we have a lot of elements from Google here, okay, the typical things that we use in the, in the, in the DevOps system, including the machine learning page. We have the script, we have the notebook, we have the Docker files, the unit tags, the different component source codes that we say here. And now we are going to use the cloud build to build all these stores in container. And the containers are the elements that we are going to use to execute everything in the Google machine in the Google machine learning framework. So, okay, we have the container registry, the cloud array, and we are going to use each container to execute all file lines and implement Google Kubernetes using huge flow. And this is the point. This is a machine learning operation in Google Cloud. Okay, but this is a bit more difficult. Not really. Okay. As I say, this is Qt flow. Qt flow is something that we allow to deploy many tools to generate machine learning models over Kubernetes. We create this from the SFMO in order to integrate all the different tools that we use for machine learning and we want to put over Kubernetes. Okay, this is the basic structure when we are creating a Kubernetes deployment that can be executed in Google Cloud, AWS, Azure, on-premise, ABM, any different cloud, but we are going to focus on this, and Qflow introduce different kind of systems. For example, Argo to control the pipeline, TensorFlow Board to check how it's going for training process, TensorFlow to create a process, or Smelter, which can be used to deploy, to service almost. Okay, how to use Qflow? Okay. Until three weeks ago, there are two ways to install Qt Flow in the Google Cloud Platform. This was the easy one, okay, which you can just install Qt Flow in your Google Platform with only a web server for, okay, with only a web for. But unfortunately, the people that develop Qt Flow and do that destroy these resources and it's not available anymore. For the moment, maybe in the future. But the way to install Qflow is going to the Qflow website and follow the different steps. Okay, the process is extremely simple, but there is something that you have to do. If you want to use Qflow, you have to use, you can use the free side of Google Cloud Platform. Then you have to have a industrial account or an account in which you can pay with your credit card because this system needs to use some software and some infrastructure that is not included in the free in the free time. Okay, then if you want to check it and you want to try it, it's really really simple. It's really good. It takes a really really good instruction here, and you can follow them. And in maybe one hour, you have your all environment deployment with your Kubernetes and Qflow. And I uh, think okay, but in this case, okay, the system even tell you to create a Kubernetes cluster and environment. Then don't be worried about that because this manual is going to explain everything that you need. Okay, and after install all of this, we are going to have something like this. This is a web application that is deployed in open Kubernetes environment, which is related with the project Google Cloud Framework. We are going to deploy our system in my case C, and this is the name of the project of the Qflow system that I'm going to execute. Why is because if I want, I can install different Qflow systems in the Kubernetes cluster. And using this URL, I can access to my Qflow cluster. The thing that I'm 
going to find is something that we still brought over different tools in a web application that allow us to create pipelines to use not just servers because we have to program some elements. Okay. We have some artifacts, okay, these are the components that we are going to create, create all pipelines, and we can connect in between and and there are many, many examples here to allow you to execute this kind of process machine learning file. But how it works in a pilot? Okay, we are going to try to explain how to create a pilot. For this reason, I'm going to use one example. This is an example pilot, it's really, really simple, to allow us to create a machine learning process. We can download this, or if you want, you can download some of them in this. It have there are many many of them, and this is how to look a pilot. Okay, we have different components as you can see. Okay, we have a large component, another large component, and we have a description of different elements. For example, we have the train set, we have the following name, we have a plugin for GitHub. This system has to download the code for GitHub, and we have many many things. Okay, this is all the configuration of the pilot, but there. Are if we are creating the pipeline, do remember we are going to use different components on operation. Each component in a pipeline is an operation. And this is the representation of an operation. We have some information. Okay, if we are going to create a point, if we have a location of a model, if we have action, okay. I don't know if some one of you have to use the iFlow, okay, or Google Composer. This way to create this file is exactly the same syntax of this kind of element because this is like an orchestration process in which we have different elements. We have copy data in which we are going to download the data. We have a metadata in which we are going to store some information. We are going to train process. We have some metadata for the train process. And finally, we have a System or in this case an operation for a component that's serving the model. And so it's clear. Okay. Once we have all of these, we have this code, we have to compile all pipelines, okay, with Python 3.6 or higher, of course, and generate a new pipeline. And the most important thing is that at the end of the pipeline, when we define all the elements, we have to set the pipeline like a Start with the artifact, which is the thing that we are going to use to automatize. Okay, this is the manual way to do all of this, but we can create it and automatize all of these process. And the objective of the pipeline is to create with this object, this artifact, automatically to be deployed in the environment in order to generate our machine learning. Okay, now when we have the pipeline, we can go to the useful web interface if we want. We can create all pilots. In this case, I'm importing the pipeline on URL, okay, and this is stored in my Google Cloud Storage. Because I'm trying to do it manually, the same process that I want to automate. Then, if you want to create this pipeline in an automatic way, you have to store the pipeline in Google Cloud Storage. Then you can deploy the pipeline in Pixel. Okay. This, okay, as I say, is the location from my Google Cloud Storage, where the pipeline is compressed. And then, when we deploy the pipeline, we have all of this. This is a visual representation of the pipeline of the transition. If you remember, we have two metadata process, one serving one, one training process, and one serving. Then, if we want to identify that in the pipeline, this way. Anyway. This is the copy data, okay, which we have here. This is the first process. We have the metadata for training and for developing data, okay. And finally, we have the training process that serving and generate some metadata, metadata from the training process. And finally, when we have the serving process, the system is executing in a web application. Then, the thing that we are going to create in the file in which we describe the headline is going to convert into different operations 
that are being executed in a parallel way. It's just this, executed alone, it's alone. And finally, when it's finished, it starts these two at the same time. And when this finished, it starts these two at the same time. And this process can be executed all the time that we need. Because if we execute a game or pipeline, the model that is serving in the web application is going to change. And that is the objective, and that is the thing that we can do with Google Cloud Platform using Cube Pro. Okay, but we have the pipeline in the Cube Pro, and now we have to think how to execute. In this case, it's really simple because Cube Pro allows us to do everything in a graphical mode. But if you want, we can use you can use using the G-Cloud tree, the control, okay? Then this is the pipeline that I created, okay? It's an end of example from Marga, okay? This is the name of the running process, and this is a test description that we want to include. And we have to define an environment which we are going to execute the frame. All of these can be executed or defined in the file and file. And we don't need to use here. And how is gonna work this? When we start to run this, we can check if everything is working well. And in this case, as you can see, the copy training process is working, the log major data is working, and now we are training a model. And this is the way to create a machine learning operation process by this compiler. But okay, if you see all of these processes that we saw before are defined by Google or defined for somewhere. And maybe we need to create all all components. This is what we will do. As you can see, we have here a specific pipeline that we created from a Google from a container image that we are storing in the Google Container registry. This means that if we want, we can remove all of these and create all the operation components of the binary by means of containers that we have to create. And how so we are going to create this? Okay, we have to create three different elements. One is the source of the component, another is the deployment file, and finally is the component definition. And with all of these, we can create all components to create all files. The first one is the source code, of course. It's a Python code in which you are going to put your training process, your downloading process, your data transformation process, and the good point is that you can use all the resources that Google Cloud provides you. If, for example, I want to use data that is stored in BigQuery, I can put here or the connection to BigQuery and get all of that data. After this, we have to create a script to create the Google concept, to create the container that is going to be stored in Google Container Registry. Of course, we have to create the file okay, for the source that we see that we saw before, and this actually find is really simple script to create all containers. We have the date, of course, we have to define in which continent we are working, in the case of Europe, we have to store the Europe, we have to store the containers in the Europe part, and we have to put D at the beginning of our, our container, and we have to define which is our organization and which is our image, and put there in all Google container registry. After that, we have to create the image using Docker, build, and to push this image here, and when the system detects this, it's going to put in the correct way. And finally, we have to confess if everything's a bit. And now we have the container, and we have the container put in, in the Google Container Registry. This means that if we call that container for our pilot, as we show here, okay, this red bar, you can see, this is a specific URL where the image is stored, okay, we can use that. And finally, we have to create the component definition file, which is the other way that we need to do to define how to get that component. Here, we describe the component, we define the different inputs and the different outputs, and this allows us to put, to put those 
to define how the components can interact with the For example, if one component, which is here, okay, as you see, okay, it needs a specific parameter that can be get it from a previous component or for another element that is, for example, the cloud. And this is a way to create a machine learning operation process by using Qflow, creating your own components for the pilot. Okay, this is only an introduction. The process, the full process, is a bit more complicated because you have to introduce the orchestration process and the different elements to execute the pilot in the full cycle. But this is a good starting point to know how it's working and see the thing that you can do with Google Cloud Platform and Qflow. Finally, this is the three most important slides. The first one is machine learning operation. It's here to be done, okay, and allow us to automate the machine learning provision process, creating pipelines to retrain the models with new data. This means that we can create full process to evolve and update all models. It's really a really simple way. Besides, use flow, use container, which is our, the more extending way to create components of software, okay, to define the operation, which can be reused. If you can create your component in a global way, you can reuse the component for training, for collecting data, for transformation, for serving, for anything. Change it only the configuration of the component or define the code in a proper way. And finally, one thing that is really good, this flow is not, a, it's not only a application or a system that can be executed in Google Cloud. It can be executed in Azure and can be executed in on-premise. You want, you can deploy all the Kubernetes environment in your premise cloud, or in your private cloud, and execute and create your own pipelines to do all of this. And this is a super good thing because if we want, we want to create all of these in premise environment, and when we are ready to put in the cloud, we are going to update it and work it exactly in the same way as in the open system. And this is all for all for, for today. And thank you so much to listen to me. I expect that you really like this talk and learn something. And if you have any questions, you can do it now, or you can send me a message to my Twitter or my LinkedIn. And one final thing, for me it's really, really important to know if you like it or not the talk, and if you know that there is something that can improve it, then there is a small form here that you can fill in order to give me your feedback about this talk. And this is all. Thank you for everything, and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks a lot for the for the talk. Um, I'm following live chat, and uh, for now there are no questions. So um, once again, once again, thanks a lot for the for the talk, uh, for your time, and uh, hope to see you on uh, some other occasion, other meetup, or if you're coming to Serbia, I will be glad to. Um, be, be free to ping me and uh, let's let's uh, see each other in person. It's been a pleasure and of course uh, I will be happy if I can go there to visit Serbia and maybe the next step first and hopefully we will be in the normal situation and we can do that. But if not, I will be really happy to do another like talk if you want to know more about machine learning or do the cloud cut. Thank right. you so much Thank for inviting me to this talk. And if anyone have any questions, if not, have a really, really nice day.